everybody and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today we are going to make a delicious easy meal that you could make even on your busiest day. We're going to make a uh, coconut peach upside down cake to go alongside that because that's the main attraction. We're going to have some apple glazed pork chops and a delicious easy succotash dish. We're actually going to get started with the cake because that takes the longest to cook. Now I have my oven preheated to 375 degrees and I have an eight by eight pan that I have sprayed with nonstick baking spray and I have melted some butter in the bottom. Now over top of the butter, I'm gonna just sprinkle some brown sugar which has gotten a little bit hard on me, but that's okay. I can crumble up what I can here. Just crumble your brown sugar. I'm using light brown sugar, but you could use dark brown if that's what you've got. Really doesn't matter. A little bit of corn syrup, just light corn syrup. But I need to help out of there. About a tablespoon or so of that going to mix that together with the butter. That's going to be your um, almost a caramelized topping on your cake. Think of a pineapple upside down cake. You know how you have that wonderful juice. That's what this is going to be. Okay, just get that down in a, an evenish layer. Then we're going to sprinkle some coconut, just some shredded coconut, which is one of my favorite things in the world to eat. I love, love, love coconut. This is just regular flaked sweetened coconut. Now over top of that, I'm gonna add about two cups of, these are just canned peaches. Now I use the unsweetened, the no sugar added peaches that, and these particular ones are diced, but you could use the, um, slices or halves, whatever you want. Or you could even use fresh peaches if you're lucky enough to have good fresh peaches. You wanna have a couple of cups and you wanna just spread that over top of the coconut. Again, your oven should be at 375. All right. Then we're gonna mix our batter. I had set that to the side. I have in here um, just some all-purpose flour, and I'm going to add just some regular granulated sugar. I've got some milk. I'm going to add some baking powder to the sugar and flour and some salt. Got a little vanilla. I'll just add that to the milk. And I'm going to add one egg. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the milk because I'm going to beat it. So I like to get all that incorporated before I add into the dry mixture. Standard way of making a batter, dry ingredients and wet ingredients. I'm going to stir all of those dry ingredients together. Now I have here just some shortening, just some regular shortening that I am going to just kind of pinch into pieces here. You can melt it if you want to. You could use butter if you wanted to, but I've got so much butter down in the bottom, I didn't want to add any more butter, but you need the moisture. So I'm just using regular shortening. Then I'm gonna stir my wet ingredients into my dry and mix all that together into a batter. It'll be lumpy, but that's okay because of the shortening. You could cream that in if you wanted to, but it melts just fine if you break it into little small bits. Just stir it all together. And then you're gonna pour this straight over top of your peaches in an even layer. This makes like a cobbler crust sort of cake, which I love. Spread it 
all the way over your peaches. This needs to bake for about 40 minutes. So that's why we're putting it in the oven first. Just make sure your peaches are covered with your batter. Just like that. If you wanted to sprinkle a little cinnamon, you could. That would be delicious in this. And we're going to put it in a 375 degree oven for about 40 minutes. So let's put this in the center of the oven. It's very important when you're baking, the positioning of your uh, racks. You don't want it too high because then the top will get done. You don't want it too low because the bottom will get done. I like to bake in the center if I'm baking a cake or something like that. And that's just gonna go for about 40 minutes. Let's get our hands in the sink. Now, we are gonna make a succotash dish, which, you know, there are just many, many ways of making succotash. This just happens to be my way. And I'm going to uh, start it with, by melting some butter. Get my butter melting here. And I have some green onions, some scallions, and a red pepper. I'm just gonna cut the bottoms off of those green onions. Because I don't want the bottoms. I have a trash can over here. And I don't want all the green tops. Now you can save those for a garnish if you want to. I have washed these. I'm just going to slice them. If you don't have green onions and you just want to substitute an onion, a regular onion, whoops, come back here, dude. Uh, that's fine. Either white or yellow or Vidalia or red or whatever you have is fine. We're going to let that butter melt. I'm going to add just a touch of olive oil. Not much, just a little bit. Just kind of helps that along. Let me get a, where, oh, there it is. Find my stuff here. Now, I don't want these to get browned. I just want them to soften. So I'm just going to go ahead and put them in there. <clears throat> and I have here one red pepper that I've washed. And I like to just cut along the sides of that middle core and then cut the bottom off. It's a good way to keep all that together. And then take a little paring knife and get any of those, uh, the membrane in there, any excess. It's okay to eat that. I just always cut it out. It won't hurt you to eat it though. And we're just gonna dice this while those are sauteing. And the way I like to do it, always, I always, there's two sides. For those of you who aren't used to prepping and cutting vegetables, a pepper has like a waxy coating, not addition. They don't put it on it. It just grows that way. But the inside is soft. If you cut a pepper from the inside, it is a lot easier than trying to cut it from the outside and breaking through that barrier, even with a sharp knife. I'm just going to cut this into small dice. I'm going to take a quick break. I'm just going to dice this up. When I come back, we're going to get the rest of the ingredients in the succotash. We're going to start on the pork chops. So I'm just going to dice, and I'll see you back here in just a minute. All righty. Now, all I did was add the red pepper to the pan and just stirred it. That's the only thing I did. Now, succotash pretty much always contains some form of onion, lima beans, and corn. Beyond that, 
use your imagination. So I, there are many, many varieties of succotash and I've made a lot of them because I really do like it. I'm gonna actually turn my heat down just a little bit. Now, I'm going to add just some frozen corn, just a bag of frozen corn and a bag of frozen lima beans, which I love. They're really good frozen. Stir that together. This really is a meal in itself, truly. I could just eat that and be happy. Now, I am going to add some sweet potatoes to mine, but you could do butternut squash. You could do um, any kind of squash. I, I'm just using sweet potatoes, and I just bought a package of the already diced up sweet potatoes because I didn't want to peel them and dice them, to be honest. So I'm just gonna add that, but this is delicious done with butternut squash too. But my store did not have any butternut squash this time. But boy, in the fall when it's in season, mm -mm -mm. doesn't that look pretty? Just look how gorgeous that is. I'm gonna add some salt and some pepper and some onion powder. And I'm gonna add a little bit of water because those sweet potatoes, actually I think I might add a little more water. Those sweet potatoes are not cooked. So they need some moisture to help them cook through. You wanna just stir that together. You could add a turnip to this. You could add a rutabaga. You could, I wouldn't add the, if you were gonna use like a zucchini squash or yellow squash, which is delicious in this. Wouldn't add that till um, about maybe 10 minutes before it's done. Now, I need to just let this cook. We're actually gonna turn it back up, I think. I'm gonna cover it and let it cook for about 10 to 15 minutes until the sweet potatoes are good and soft and the other things are heated through. It's really, really good and so healthy. Now, <clears throat> for our main dish, we are going to make an apple glazed pork chop. This is really a very, very good dish. Now, the first thing you want to do is preheat a skillet. I like to use a nonstick skillet for this. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil because that's what I have up here. But if you have canola or vegetable oil, that's fine too. I, you know, if I'm doing a quick saute of something, I use olive oil a lot because it's a heart healthy oil. Uh, if I'm deep frying or something like that, obviously you wouldn't want to use olive oil, but it's okay to do things like this with olive oil. All right, now our pork chops are brown. So let's flip them over. You see that beautiful golden brown? That's exactly what you want. Oh, yum. Turn them over. Now I'm actually gonna turn down my heat since I've got that one side browned because I don't wanna burn anything. Now I have here one apple that I have cored and I'm uh, mincing. I'm using a Honeycrisp, but you could use whatever kind of apple that you like. A Granny Smith is delicious, a Gala. I wouldn't use uh, Red Delicious because I personally just don't think they have a whole, whole lot of flavor, but you could use whatever you like. Now, just set that to the side. Now, in this container, I have some apple juice, some apple butter, and some coarse-grained mustard that I'm going to stir together. If you can find apple jelly, you can use that. I, I have a hard time finding that anymore for some reason. I used to not have any problem finding it, but I just used apple butter, which is 
equally as delicious. All right, now we've got our mixture and I'm gonna just sprinkle a little bit of that over top of each pork chop. Mm, 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 mm. This is gonna create a sauce. It's gonna mix with the juices. It's gonna be yummy. Then I'm gonna take my apple that I um, chopped up and I'm just going to place this over top. Of my pork chops. At this point, you could transfer all of that to a slow cooker if you wanted to and let it just go on low. If you wanted to leave it and then come home to dinner. And then if you have any, you know, leftover sauce, be sure you use all that. Don't throw that away. And then you want to cover that. And I don't have a lid for this skillet, so I'm just gonna improvise with a big um, lid from a saucepan. You wanna turn it down to like medium low. Let's check our succotash. That is looking yummy. Let me see if that squash is tender. Uh, not squash, sweet potato. Almost, mm, that's so good. So I'm just gonna let this stuff simmer for a minute, take a quick break, clean up. When I come back, I'll show you how to serve all this and we'll get our cake out of the oven. I'll be back in just a minute. Now, the sweet potatoes kind of bleed their color over. So I like to add a little bit of just a green, frozen green peas, um, just at the last minute. You don't have to do that if you don't want, but it just adds a, a brightness. And I actually, you know, they just need a minute is all they need to thaw. I like to, uh, take frozen peas and thaw them and use them in a salad. You don't even have to cook them, just thaw them. They're delicious. And that just adds a brightness to it. Now here's our pork chops, which smell amazing. Let me grab a pair of tongs. Where are all my tongs? Let's get one of the pork chops. and then some of that beautiful sauce. Now you don't wanna leave that sauce behind. Remember I told you the, the juices would mix with the apples and make this wonderful sauce. So you wanna spoon that over top of your pork chop and then get some of your succotash. And put that right there along the side and you have got a delicious, healthy meal. I could eat the succotash all by itself. Now here is our uh, upside down cake. And you just wanna take a spoon, go around the edges a little bit, because remember, you've got a, a sticky caramelization going on there. Oh. This is so good. You could serve this with some homemade whipped cream or some vanilla ice cream, whatever you would want to serve it with. And then flip that upside down. And be sure that you get those juices and that wonderful coconut. 
oh, so, so good. So there is our delicious meal that you could make any day of the week. We've got our wonderful pork chop with our apple glaze on it. Then we've got our succotash that we just stirred in some bright green peas right there at the end. Or you could just do some parsley or some of the green onion tops would be fine too. But there's a very, very easy, healthy meal that you could make any night of the week. I want to show you what the inside of that pork chop looks like. It's so delicious. See how moist and tender and juicy that is? Oh my goodness. Let's give it a taste. I can't wait. I'm starving. I love pork chops. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Perfection. Cooked perfectly. You really don't have to cook pork chops to death. People used to cook them until they were just, they were hard, they were dry, they were tough. They were not good. Apple and apple butter and apple juice and those kinds of flavors. I just, I added a little cumin because I didn't want it to be overly sweet. And that coarse grain mustard make that delicious sauce. But apples are a natural with pork chops. You could also cut up maybe a, um, a onion in that and saute that along with the, um, in the beginning, you know, with your pork chop or add it at the end and let it saute. Apples and onions cooked together are delicious. So there's a very, very easy meal for you to make any day of the week. We've got our succotash, a thousand and one ways to make succotash. Just add, you, you wanna have corn, you wanna have lima beans, and usually it has red pepper and some kind of onion. Beyond that, you use your own discretion as to what you want. And don't forget, I got to taste our delicious peach coconut upside down cake. Oh. Mm mm mm. That is really good. Very warm. Because I just took it out of the oven. But you could serve that with a scoop of vanilla bean ice cream, or maybe some butter pecan ice cream, or some whipped cream or cool whip. Fabulous or it's on its own, it's fabulous. So there you go, some fast, easy recipes for you to try any night of the week. Try them, let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.